Joining us now, Pennsylvania's governor-elect Josh Shapiro. He set a new record for most votes in a Pennsylvania gubernatorial election last week in his defeat of Republican Doug Mastriano. And governor-elect, we were saying it as we were seeing it, especially you, Joe, that you were able to communicate everything at once and it didn't seem hard for you, especially democracy well, because, and abortion. Yeah, because there seemed to be a false choice. People were saying, well, we can't talk about yeah. inflation and crime because we need to talk about democracy and abortion. You're like, eh. Yeah. Talking well, well, about it all. Hold my beer. I'm going to talk <laughs> about it all. Tell us, tell us well, how that worked for you in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Joe Mika. Here's what we learned. This is the big storyline, and I was saying this every day during the campaign, Pennsylvanians know how to walk and chew gum at the same time, right? I mean, they can care about safety in their communities. They can care about rising costs. They can also care about their personal freedoms, whether it's the right to make decisions over their own bodies or the right to vote. And I felt that no matter where I was, you know, on farms or on street corners in our urban, you know, in our cities, I mean, folks can care about a whole bunch of things. And we showed up, we listened, and uh, Pennsylvanians proved that they can walk and chew gum at the same time. So, uh, Governor-elect, help us out. We're, we're, we're looking at an exit poll there that shows 37 uh, percent. It talked about abortion being the top issue. It's interesting. We saw that in Pennsylvania. We saw that in Michigan. And I remember early in the evening looking at polls um, that, that said abortion was really high on a lot of voters' minds. Yeah. And yet you look at all of the issue polls that media mm -hmm. put out in the, uh, I'd say the last month, and abortion was at 5%, 6%, 7%. And it didn't make any sense to us, but the, all the issue polls kept coming back that way. What did you hear on the campaign trail? I'm, I'm curious about yeah. post ops up until Election Day, and not just from traditional Democratic voters, but even from independents who might be a bit more pro-life than, say, you. You know, I, I heard and felt it everywhere. I, I remember an older woman in Lawrence County, Pennsylvania. I'm in a, a pretty Republican community. Literally, Joe, like, grabbed me by the jacket, pulled me into her face, and with a finger in my face said, do not let us go back to what it was like before Roe. You wouldn't expect to hear that in Lawrence County. And then we saw, for example, um, students just mobilizing and organizing like we've never seen before. Over 50 Student for Shapiro chapters, and I got to give a shout out to our daughter, Sophia, who started those uh, beginning on Pitt's campus. Um, it, it was just incredible to see young people motivated by that. And then finally, and this is something that I think it's important and shouldn't be lost, um, a whole bunch of dads who would come over to me and sort of quietly lean over and say, I have a daughter. Don't let yes. them take away her rights. And so I heard that a lot, too. And um, again, I, I hate to keep repeating this, but folks know how to walk and chew gum at the same time. They can care about those issues and also care about the so-called kitchen table issues. And, and that's what we focused on every day, protecting people's Absolutely. freedoms and making sure every kid got a good education, safe communities and economy that lifts everybody up. Yeah, and I want to bring Huma Abedin into the conversation for the next question. Huma, just to Governor-elect Shapiro's sure. point, I always thought there were not just a lot of women turning out uh, and voting um, about the abortion issue, about their rights being taken away, but a lot of men, too, who happen to care about the women in their lives. Absolutely. And congratulations, um, uh, Governor-elect. I actually, one of the Thanks things I wanted so to, I, I was curious to ask you about the issue of crime. I mean, you were, have been Attorney General since 2017, and this is an issue that has stymied Democrats in some parts of the country, and, and others have managed to turn it around. I'm curious what you saw um, on the campaign that made uh, crime uh, a winning issue, uh, certainly in your state. Well, look, I talked about this issue uh, every day, and I think you have to begin the conversation, Huma, by recognizing that people have a right to both be safe and feel safe in their communities. And I think in government, we have a fundamental responsibility to deliver that. And so I talked a lot about not just my record on crime, arresting over 8,000 drug dealers, 500 child predators, over 500 gun traffickers, but also my plans for the future to hire more police, to make sure that they're properly trained, that they look like the communities they're sworn to protect. 
I wasn't afraid to lean in on that issue, and I don't think any Democrat should. This is an issue that um, folks trust us on, and we have to make sure that people understand we have plans to keep them safe. And I'm going to continue to not just talk about those issues, but work on them. And this is something that I think is critical for us as a party to get back to. Mr. Governor-elect, I'm ticking through some of the counties in Pennsylvania and just looking how you did in a lot of them. Some of them that have been sort of written off now as red counties, or at least as Trump counties. Uh, Beaver was plus 18 for Donald Trump in 2020. You won that by three points. Burks, plus eight yep. for Trump in 2020. You won it by about four points. Cumberland, plus 10 and a half for Trump. You won it by almost eight points two years later. And Luzerne, plus 14. You flipped that uh, by two points as well. What did you do in those counties in particular? What did you tell those voters who almost uniformly by double digits went two years ago for Donald Trump? You know, I, I showed up and I treated people with respect and I talked about issues that actually mattered to them, not the noise that they were used to hearing from politicians. Um, I both showed them my record of, of success in their communities, but also my plans to try and make their lives better. Look, I think the good people of Pennsylvania just want to know you're fighting for them and you're going to deliver something for them and you're going to show up in their neighborhoods and at their diners and treat them with respect. That you're going to learn about their businesses and see what you can do to help them flourish, that you're going to care about their kids. And so that's what we did. I, I think it's also important to note that, you know, this ain't my first rodeo. I mean, I, I've won twice statewide and actually in all three elections, I've earned more votes than anyone on the ballot and I've earned more votes than anyone in the history of Pennsylvania. And I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. I'm saying that because I have a record of showing up in these communities and delivering for folks. And this was just another example of that. We're really proud of the campaign we ran in all 67 counties in Pennsylvania. Governor, you did fairly well among a constituency, a constituency that Democrats have hard times lately identifying and getting to vote for them. White men from a working class families. How did you do it going forward? How does the Democratic Party do it? Yeah, Mike, that's a great question. I, I hate to even have to answer a question this at this point in the morning from a Celtics fan, but I will do it wow. because of my respect <laughs> wow. for Celtics you in this, this show. <laughs> but uh, God, um, but, but anyway, look, I mean, <laughs> I think it goes back to what I said a, a moment ago. You, you got to show up and treat people with respect. I think too many in our party have written off constituencies or written off communities. And the, the bottom line here is we got to lift everybody up. And I think we're a party with real and meaningful answers to some of the pressing problems of today and tomorrow. And I think in the way you show up, in the language that you use, in the way you engage with people, it has to be predicated upon respect. I think we've had too many candidates over the last decade or so who come in um, and try and tell people what they need to know and what they need to hear instead of listening. And I think I've got a strong track record of listening and turning that into action and delivering for people. Pennsylvanians mm -hmm. know who I am, know what I can deliver for them, and that's what I continue to do as their next governor. Right. Governor-elect Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania, congratulations and thank you for being on the congratulations show. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs> thank you. Um, so